really impressed me. I just recently went to to uh, Florida again to Orlando, and I was in the Harry Potter world in Island of Adventure. This is a theme park of Universal Studios, and one of the things that amazed me so much is how how somebody is able to take you into the world that somebody in the past thought about. They dreamt about it. They wrote books about it, and they bring it now into reality and it it just becomes so vivid almost as if you were part of it right it it um it takes you into this other world and and it makes you dream and i was just there pondering and thinking how did this did this person jk rowling come up with this idea how was it that they they ever they were able to come up with it and not only that that they were able to make it so mainstream that is one of the things that amazed me. Um, and so that's why I really wanted to kind of touch on this topic. Uh, I know recently we've had also the Spider-Man movie come out and that's been so impactful as well. So uh, as an initial question, uh, why do you think still that these characters become so mainstream in society? Is it because we can relate to them? Is it, what What do you think is the the defining factor of, of main, mainstream stories and characters. Good one, because it's sometimes very hard to predict what will become so mainstream. And I know, like, going off what we talked about last week, I mean, like, something like Star Wars, for example, or even Harry Potter, like you mentioned, J.K. Rowling, you take something like that that just seems so ridiculous. Like, you look at it and forget about, forget about it being Harry Potter for a second or Star Wars and just forget about your experiences with it for a second. And look at it with fresh eyes and then you think, wow, this is just the most ridiculous ideas, but they're the most popular ideas right now, like today. And for years, they've been very popular and very mainstream. So like, like, you know, like children going to a school where they learn how to be wizards, like it sounds crazy. It sounds silly, you know, but it happens to be a really good idea and people love it all across the whole world. And same with Star Wars. It sounds ridiculous on the surface level. Like you talk about like a, a dog walking around with a princess fairy tale princess you know with like a guys who with guns that shoot light from them and then they have swords but they're not really swords they're just beams of light that they fight with you know and it's in space like it just sounds crazy but and yet it happens to be one of the most popular beloved franchises like ever like everyone almost everyone's heard star wars most people have seen star wars it's still going to this day and harry potter is still going on to this day so why does one idea become mainstream when another one doesn't yeah and do you think do you think it might also be that you know they just had a really good business person along with them to help them promote it you know because you know it makes me think like maybe maybe somebody wrote something as that could eventually become as popular as harry potter but they just never had the right person to publish it or the right person to to put it out there well, see, with that, I would say, like, with J.K. Rowling, for example, we talked about this, too, how she was, her book for Harry Potter was rejected, like, a hundred or so times before it finally got accepted by a publisher. So even yeah. that idea is still, the idea is still so popular to this day, got rejected a hundred or so times before finally being accepted. Maybe it takes the right idea, but it also, maybe it takes persistence, because George Lucas with Star Wars, he had to be persistent, too. No one believed in this idea. And I'm glad he pushed through it because everyone wouldn't have Star Wars. So, because I mean, you think about it when you first hear about it, it sounds kind of ridiculous, right? But push through it. So I think maybe it's persistence, you know, but I also think it's having a very unique, original, iconic idea. And I think the word iconic is so important because I think that's what differentiates. Because when I look at movies that are mainstream and movies that are not, the mainstream ones like Marvel and Star Wars and DC. They tend to be very, very iconic. Like the superhero costumes, they stand out from anything else. You know, you look at cowboy movies, and one of the ones that stand out the most, the Clint Eastwood ones, because they're iconic. His name is iconic. What would you say defines iconic? Like, yeah, what, what, is, what makes something iconic? Yeah, what is iconic? <laughs> yeah. I think iconic I is, like, different than the norm, if that makes sense. Topic. Something that seems like, familiar but still a little bit out of the box kind of deal right so it it, it, it's almost like you know people can still relate to it it's not like 
you know, an alien from the planet Zero. And he, he uh, writes with his, with his nose and just like, yeah. I mean, we, and, and it's interesting because we can only create from what we know. Right. And so, but, you know, stories and, and characters, they, they gain some traction because they stand out. Like you said, just slightly change the, the, the scale and that will seem innovative and new, you know, it's just kind of like revamping it kind of deal. Yeah. Yeah, you know, know, and I, I think that's what they've done with with Marvel. They just revamped it every year, and they just create right. more out of the same thing. That's true, and it can get repetitive when you do it like that. With Marvel, does it for decades now, or over a decade now. So yeah, I can definitely get that way. But I think you're right. You know, it's something that's slightly different, but it's still relatable to our reality. So like Superman is. When he's not Superman, he's a journalist. You know, that's relatable. That's real life. It's grounded in some way. Star Wars, the lightsabers seem out there, but they're based on swords. So we can relate to it and understand how they work. And everything in Star Wars follows certain rules of logic. It's not like things just happen randomly. Like everything, the, the force, not everyone has a force. The force has certain rules. There's only certain things you can do with the force. So like, I think that's called, in, there's a technical word for it in literature. I forgot what it's called, but it's like internal logic. And as authors say that as long as your story has internal logic and follows it and doesn't break its own rules, then the suspension of disbelief from the audience will remain intact. I think movies that just go all over the place with logic and don't have any consistent patterns, kind of, people don't tend to like that as much. It's like, the movie.